I was really excited at the time. Um, it was having my own comic book and and um, because I, I had been published in fanzines before, but publishing myself and having a comic book that was all my own, it, it was way more exciting because um, uh, quite frankly, a lot of the work in those, a lot of the other work in the fanzines, I didn't think looked so good. And this was a, a, a publication that I could control completely on my own. And so I was totally responsible for it. And I was just very proud of it. Um, even though, yeah, it was very, it wasn't that impressive if you look at it today. But um, it was exciting at the time. Uh, pretty happy. Uh, there are... Uh, the thing is, I, I try and avoid making the mistake of comparing myself to other cartoonists because there are, there are so many other cartoonists who are way better than I am at, at drawing. Um, my, like my hero, Robert Crumb. I mean, there's no way I could do what, what Crumb does. Uh, or... Or whoever, Chris, Chris Ware is a much better draftsman than, than I am. Um, but as long as I'm not focusing on what they're doing, as long as I'm only looking at my own progress over the years, um, I'm, I'm happy with, with, uh, with where I've come uh, over those years. If you have one. Yeah, I usually have a routine. Um, I wake up about 5.30, 6 o'clock, and I go on the internet, uh, and usually I try and make that the only time during the day when I'm on the internet. I'm online for maybe 45 to 60 minutes, and then I, um, then I have breakfast and shower and start working, and I work it depends on the day. If, if I'm not seeing any friends or anything, then I will work through till the evening uh, with breaks for lunch and dinner. Um, and then maybe at about nine o'clock, I go to bed and read for an hour in bed and then go to sleep. Um, but, you know, sometimes friends will call up during the day and I'll go play tennis or have lunch with someone or whatever. So uh, it's really my friends that will break up a day and make it more social if they call to do something. Probably the most difficult was my the book I did about Louis Riel, um, the, the, the historic, the, the Canadian history one. Um, because Unlike the Bible, the, that history is much more recent and it's very contentious in Canada. It's, uh, his portrayal is still controversial um, and getting the story right and understanding it completely, it was difficult. Um, in a way, more difficult than understanding the Bible. Maybe not more difficult, but, but uh, because, because um, the subject of Louis Riel is still very much present for Canadians in a way that the Bible isn't. The Bible is kind of receding into the past and people aren't as concerned with it as they used to be. So um, yeah, the, the Louis Riel book was the most difficult probably. It's such a complex book. Um, but it's complex because it really isn't one book. It's many books by many authors. Many authors who are all contradicting each other. And so understanding it as giving one message is a mistake. Um, it's, it's, it's lots and lots of messages. Um, and that's what makes it complex and difficult to under understand. Um, but it's still, to me, the ground on which um, our society rests. Understanding it, I think, is, is important. Um, and I'm doing my best to understand it.
Hmm. Um, a, a significant Canadian cartoonist who you might not know is um, a young guy. He's in his 20s. His name is Michael DeForge. He, he, him I would recommend. He's, he's doing really interesting stuff. Um, oh, another young cartoonist is Noah Van Skyver. He's, he's really doing interesting stuff. I don't know if he's published in Spain either, but, um, um, but of course I, I like the established cartoonists too, Dan Klaus and, and Chris Ware and Robert Crumb, all the greats, Seth, Joe Matt.